So you talked there about this high volume of, of data that's being recorded. Is that something to do with high cardinality? Or what does that term mean to, to you and to Chronosphere? Yeah, I mean, that term has been coming up a lot more frequently. And I'll say that that's definitely one of the causes um, of the increase of the volume of data, right? Uh, if you look at the broader uh, landscape that companies are, are transitioning through right now in the technology stacks, we're seeing a lot of infrastructure moving from a VM-based infrastructure to a container-based infrastructure there, right? So that move alone, you can imagine, if you think about the volume of data produced perhaps on the metrics front, you know, every, every container needs to emit as much data as a VM did before. Now you have tens of containers running per VM. So, so that it, it helps with increase there. Same with the breakup of monoliths into microservices, you know, things are being broken up in tinier and tinier pieces. So, so that is one part that's causing the increase in data. High cardinality is the, uh, I would say, the second leading cause of an increase in data. And the concept of high cardinality, if you think about it, especially from the metrics perspective, where we see the problem uh, um, come up the worst, perhaps, mm -hmm. is on the metric side. If you think about this, the, the cause of it is really, you know, in these new systems, there's a lot of tiny moving parts. So it's not just like, hey, there was my one uh, monolith, there's one endpoint, it runs on one VM. So when something goes wrong, I don't know exactly what that is. If you look at the modern architecture, one request goes through 20 of these microservices on like in these, these containers are everywhere, right? So, um, you know, there, there's a need to add I would say it's a huge value in adding uh, a lot more dimensions in which to slice and dice the data by. So perhaps if you take a, a particular um, endpoint that's receiving requests, right, uh, or you're me measuring perhaps the, the, the response code on that particular request, it's one thing to know, okay, I'm counting the number of 500s I get and that number is spiking. It's additionally useful for you to break that data down into in, in many different ways. So you can take, for, for example, on the infrastructure level, it's great to say, okay, out of those 500s, are they all coming from one region or another region? Can you tell me that? Is it coming from one AZ or another AZ? Is it coming from one cluster or another cl a cl cl cluster or perhaps Kubernetes namespace, right? And every time you ask that question, you can imagine the data to be able to tell you the answer needs a dimension that can separate um, cluster A versus cluster B, region A versus region B, uh, zone A versus zone B, right? So um, every time you ask these questions, the, the, the data has to tell you that. So we're getting a lot more questions these days from the infrastructure level than we did before, just because the underlying infrastructure is a lot more complicated. We're also getting a lot more questions on the data from the business side of things, from the customer side as well, right? If you think about a modern product these days, it's 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 unlike, you know, perhaps 20 years ago, there wasn't a lot of customizations in products for different markets, for different types of users and products were, were simpler. Whereas if you look at today, uh, perhaps, you know, if you take, um, uh, a, a, a ride sharing or perhaps a food a delivery network, you know, you can imagine that they don't just have one product, they customize a product for every local market that they're in. So the questions they're asking are a lot more complicated. It's not just, you know, perhaps how many rides is happening right now. It's like, well, how many rides is happening for all the products we offer in every market that we offer, right? Um, and, and if you think about how quickly we iterate the product these days, you know, where we're deploying um, multiple times a day. So like, constant questions about that is like, which version is the customer running? Which like, how are they in? Um, what client version are they using? What client OS are they using, et cetera, right? So uh, the questions that we ask is a lot more. And again, every time you ask one of these questions, you need um, more dimensions on the data to help answer that for you. Um, now, the problem with that is each time you add a dimension on, so let's say you have 10 dimensions um, and they have 10 values each. Each time you add a dimension on, unfortunately, uh, they multiply upon each other. So if you have 10 dimensions, which is 10 values each, which you know it doesn't actually seem like a huge data set, um, when you multiply that all out, uh, it's a huge number. It's not 100, it's it's a very large, I don't even know what the number is exactly, but it's, a very, it's 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10, like 10 times, right? So it's a very large number. And that is the reason, like that is the underlying cause for high cardinality is that, you know, um, because the, each additional question you ask is multiplicative in terms of the amount of data you are producing. So that is also a huge cause of this rise in data. Um, the, the the interesting thing is that, you know, it's it's for a particular cause, like being able to answer these questions is super useful to a business. So now you've got this like, um, you know, sort of um, tough spot you're in where, you know, I, I want to ask more questions, it's valuable to me, but each time I do, and each time I ask in particular an additional question, it costs me so much more in terms of the data of volume. So, you know, that is actually the the the, the second um, uh, cause um, of, of an increase in the volume of data that gets produced in the observability space. 
So I don't know whether we should describe high cardinality as a as a problem per se. I guess it's something that needs to be dealt with and tackled. But in, in some respects, it's a kind of good thing to have all yeah. this information. But what would you say the best strategies for solving it or or, yeah. or, or harnessing it? <laughs> it's yeah. maybe a better that's way of question. putting it. And, and, you know, I, I think that's the right way to think about it. It's not, um, can I not have it or not? It's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's useful. So how can I have it? Um, but not, uh, you know, have it cost me an arm and a leg, right? Yeah. Um, and I'd say the best approach here is is similar to our approach for the three phases in a sense. It's not the three phases, but it's a sense that, okay, like look at it from an outcome perspective and optimize for the outcome. Don't optimize for the input. So don't think about all the dimensions you're putting on. Think about, okay, well, I put on all of these dimensions on the data, but when I look at the data, what are the different views of that that I need, right? It's it's very rare when you're debugging a problem. What we often find is that, you know, um, the issue is either an infrastructure related issue, in which case you do care about, you know, the 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 region, it's in the cluster, it's in the zone, it's in things like that. Um, or it's a business problem. You do care about things on the business side, like which client version they're using, things like that. It's very rare that a problem is like, oh, hey, this, this is because it's this client version in this locale running only in this AZ with this thing. Like the combination of yep. all of those dimensions is quite rare. And because of the multiplicative effect, it's, it's interesting. Um, you can you can imagine that example I gave where there's um, 10 uh, unique um, uh, dimensions here with 10 unique values there. It produces an enormous amount of data. And when somebody queries that data, um, generally when you issue a query and you say like, well, if you query that data, you'll never want to map all of the results on a single dashboard because the human cannot process that much data on a single screen. There's not enough pixels to put that data there on, on, on a screen, right? And in fact, for a human, there's probably, if you think about a dashboard, uh, I don't know the science behind this, but I can imagine more than like 10 lines or so, or like 10 pieces of data, it gets really confusing. If it gets to the hundreds, it, it, it's, it's gonna get tough. And we're, we're talking about probably the tens of millions of, of, of streams of data, right? Um, but when we look at it, you need the underlying data because you want to aggregate all of it and say, well, okay, aggregate and sum up everything, but show me AZA versus AZB, right? So if you look at the results that you're getting, it's probably two or three lines on a graph. However, to generate those two or three lines, it needs to go query or you know, 10 million or however many um, underlying time series. So the, the interesting thing is, is a mismatch there where um, you know, you produce a lot of this data, um, but when you view it, you only actually view um, uh, 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 far fewer uh, unique dimensions. So, you know, one of the the, the sort of um, techniques here is to figure out what views of the data you want, and uh, perhaps through, through through tooling or whatnot, uh, optimize the data thus that uh, it is only in those particular views. Um, and, and I'm sure there's something not really great uh, at maths here, but I'm sure there's something that says that, you know, 10 to the power of 10 is much smaller than, let's say, 5 to the power of 5 plus 5 to the power of 5, right? I, I think w we should check that afterwards. Um, but, but, but I think because uh, it would be 2 times 5 to the power of 5, I think is much smaller than 10 to the power of 10, right? Um, and, and if you think about that, that concept, what we're really trying to do is to group together um, the views of the data that you regularly and need to query together um, and not, not all of the views. And the reason we do that uh, perhaps, and it's, it's beneficial to do that when you go query the data is when you produce the data, it's very hard to produce the data with all these views up front because you don't know what the views are gonna be until you need those views uh, uh, later on. So when you're instrumenting, generally it's like, well, put on all the dimensions that you could ever possibly need. Don't yeah. pre-compute all the calculations yeah. there because yeah. all the combinations, that's actually quite hard. And then ideally there'd be something that can um, do that for you um, on on the fly um, and, and sort of uh, pre-produce the views of the data that you do need because we know that the views is far less cardinality and far less storage cost um, than perhaps um, uh, all of the raw data. So that sort of, gives you, you know, um, your, 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 your cherry on top and, and the pie as well, uh, because you still maintain all the different views that you want uh, without, um, so, so, so you sort of achieve your outcome there without having to store all the raw underlying data here. Um, and here at Chronosphere, we sort of provide the tooling that allows you to do that manipulation on the fly, but also the tooling that allows you to visualize what the high cardinality is, because that that's one of the other issues um, with a high cardinality problem is 
um, a single line of instrumentation doesn't result in a single metric, right? And, and often a single line of instrumentation results in uh, copious amounts of, of, of data there. And it's really quite hard for the person who's instrumented to understand what the effects of those things are. So for us at Chronosphere, it's been about sort of providing visibility into that. So you sort of understand the high cardinality data that you're producing and understand it in terms of here are the dimensions, here's the cardinality on the dimensions, this is why it's so it's so high, and then giving you the tooling to help optimize for those views more than anything else. And that's been our, uh, from our experience at least, the best approach to solve the high cardinality problem where you're not just asking people drop the dimensions because they are useful um, for a business.